Overview. Leash reactivity is a very common behavioral problem in dogs. With leash reactivity, dogs lunge, bark, growl, and pull on leash towards other dogs. This can make walks unbearable for owners and will cause a service dog to fail out. Behavioral adjustment trainer is a user-friendly package of behavioral techniques for reducing leash reactivity in dogs. In this module, you will learn about BAT and how to use it to reduce leash reactivity. Learning objectives. By the end of this module, students will 1. Explain BAT 2. Describe the BAT zone 3. Identify calming signals 4. Describe the three types of BAT setup 5. Recall the steps of the basic BAT setup Learning activities. Required reading. Stewart on BAT and the module reading quiz. Behavior adjustment training. What is it? Leash reactivity develops when a dog becomes frustrated when on leash in the presence of people or other dogs, most commonly other dogs. This begins when a dog is highly motivated to interact with other dogs, but is corrected when attempting to do so or pulled back by a leash jerk. This can also develop if a dog experiences something scary when on leash. For example, if attacked by another dog. The dog learns that on leash plus other dogs equals bad things. Whether that be frustration, anxiety from not being allowed to interact, or punishment from the owner, or the inability to escape if attacked. The on-leash dog's reaction may look very aggressive, so owners often avoid allowing the dogs to interact with other dogs when on leash, making the problem worse. Behavior Adjustment Training, or BAT, is a package of several behavioral techniques made user-friendly and easy to understand for the treatment of leash-reactive dogs. Developed in 2009 by Grisha Stewart, BAT is grounded in systemic, systematic desensitization, functional communication training, reading canine body language signals, and counter-conditioning methods to treat aggression and reactivity when a dog is on leash. BAT uses reward-based principles to change the underlying motivation for, reac for reactivity and or aggression. BAT Basics The key to BAT is a systematic exposure. Keep the problem dog at a distance from the trigger so that the dog is not experiencing stress or frustration and therefore not reacting. Gradually increase the intensity of the trigger, distance, movement, ex movement etc. while the problem dog is taught an alternative behavior. The problem dog is taught an alternative behavior called calming signals using the functional reward with leash reactivity. The functional reward is to reduce frustration or anxiety, which occurs when the trigger goes away. So during BAT, escape is the functional reward. Bonus rewards, such as a highly valued treat, are used during early stages of BAT. Steps in BAT. Identify the dog's trigger, other dogs, people, Determine the dog's threshold. At what distance does he react? All dogs or only certain kinds? Does he react if the dog is stationary or only if it's moving? And develop a trigger hierarchy. Plan how to keep the problem dog under threshold. Avoid accidental run-ins in real life and have a plan for when the unavoidable happens. Assume escape is the function of the reactivity. Determine replacement behavior, calming signal. Organize bat setups and generalize using BAT setups with multiple dogs in multiple situations. Replacement behaviors. The replacement behavior used should be easily, easy for the handler to see and something that the dog already offers often. For example, looking away from the trigger is an easy behavior to notice and when below threshold is likely to be offered by the dog. Other replacement behaviors include sniffing the ground, play, bowing, and turning their body around. I find that the easiest replacement behavior is looking away from the trigger. Staying below threshold. As with many dog behavior problems, the first step in treatment is to prevent the behavior's occurrence. Each time the behavior occurs, it is likely to be reinforced because the only responsible thing to do with a fearful or aggressive dog is to remove them from the situation, thus providing escape contingent on reactivity. The following diagram illustrates the level of threshold based on the dog's reaction and body language. The bat zone, or the level required for treatment effectiveness, is below the reactivity threshold, where the dog is either relaxed or just beginning to show subtle signs of stress, such as slowing down, looking toward the trigger, and closing their mouth. Once above this threshold, no learning can take place. Trigger stacking occurs when more than one stressor is present in the environment at the same time. This can cause a dog to react seemingly out of nowhere. To prevent this, keep in mind all of the different variables that contribute to the, do the, student's, the student dog's perception and reaction to the trigger. Distance from the trigger is the most obvious factor, but the movement of the other dog plays a major role in the student dog's reaction. 
Although whether or not the other dog is looking at or pulling towards the other student dog, and if the other dog is barking. So if the other dog is moving, you may need to increase the distance to prevent a reaction. Here is another diagram that shows various levels of dog stress and what you can do at each level. Basic bat setup. There are five steps involved in the basic bat setup. One, choice point. This is when the dog first notices the trigger but is not yet overly stressed. Two, wait for a good choice. This is when we are looking for that replacement behavior. You may need to help the dog at first using prompting. Three, mark. You will mark the good choice for replacement behavior using a clicker or your voice, yes. Four, functional reward. After marking the good behavior, provide escape by moving away from the trigger. 5. Bonus Reward. There is an optional step but is recommended, especially in be beginning bat. Toys and treats are most often used as a bonus reward. What if your dog goes over the threshold? First, do your best to prevent this from happening. In the real world, dogs sometimes appear suddenly at a distance that the problem dog can't handle. If this happens, you will notice that your dog begins displaying stress signals such as heavy breathing, stiffness, and or intense staring at the trigger. Avoid reprimanding the dog, but instead quickly move away from the trigger to a below threshold distance. Once below threshold, you can begin BAT again. BAT illustrates three setup variations, monster in the middle, spiraling monster, and parallel walking. Monster in the middle is when the decoy dog is in the middle and the student dog walks in a circle around the decoy dog. The student dog moves closer to the decoy, makes a good choice, and then moves further away from the decoy while continuing to circle around the decoy at a safe distance. This is a great setup to begin with because the student dog is moving, which allows for more distraction and the decoy dog is stationary, reducing the trigger potential. The spiraling monster is a bit more challenging because the student dog is stationary in the middle of the circle while the decoy dog moves around him or her. The student dog is going to be more threatened in this situation, so it's best to do this after some initial practice with the monster in the middle. Also, when beginning this setup, increase the distance from the decoy dog to prevent any potential reactions. Parallel walking is when the student and decoy dog walk side by side, behind or towards each other. Remember to reward good choices by moving the student dog away from the decoy dog. Walking side by side in the same direction is a great goal to have. Sudden Environmental Contrast, SEC. Another situation in which we need to train our bat dogs is for sudden changes in the environment or sudden environmental contrast. This occurs when another dog appears from behind a barrier or around a turn. If dogs are not trained how to respond in this situation, they will continue to be reactive when it occurs. In order for the dog to be non-reactive in real life, we must include SEC during setups. This will be added later once the dog is doing well in all other situations. As with all others, these setups will begin at an easy level and gradually progress to more difficult as the student dog can handle it. Stage 1 of BAT BAT includes three stages that can be interchanged depending on the situation. First, the dog perceives the trigger at a non-reactive distance and level. This may simply be the dog looking in the direction of the trigger, but usually also involves a subtle change in the student dog's body language, like a perk in ears or monetary stillness, as they look at the trigger. As soon as the dog looks in the direction of the trigger, the trainer marks that moment with a clicker or a yes. Next, the trainer delivers the functional reward, escape, by encouraging the dog to move further away from the trigger. Lastly, the student dog is provided a bonus reward, such as a toy or treat. Bat Stage 2 Use Stage 2 when it is highly likely that your dog will make a good choice with the use of treats and or toys as distraction. Anytime you are unsure, use stage 1 to prevent a reaction. Stage 2 allows the dog to make a choice, choose, go, treat. First, the dog perceives the trigger, so watch for body language changes that this has occurred. Next, wait for the student dog to make a good choice, usually looking away from the trigger. Mark this good choice immediately with a clicker or yes. Move away from the trigger quickly and then deliver praise and a treat or toy. Bat Stage 3 
Stage three is a reserved for situations in which you know that the dog will make the correct choice without food or toys as distraction. This is the highest level of bat. The trainer simply marks the good choice and rewards it with praise and by moving the student dog away from the trigger.